Hey, hello everybody, Disciple here with Overwatch Curios. Now, when it comes to playing your best game possible, it's pretty easy to lose sight of anything other than what's directly in front of you at any given point. Particularly in cases where you may be filling in for a role you're not comfortable on or when you're first starting out in it. This is often the case when it comes to the support role in particular. Many times players will end up filling for this role instead of playing what they prefer to, but that doesn't mean that you can't have any impact on the game because you're the one who is in charge of keeping your teammates alive. The support role is critical to the success of the team, and because of that, we want to discuss some of the differences between good and bad support players, and provide you all with some quick and easy tips and advice that can take your support play to the next level just by having better habits inside of the match. And it doesn't matter if you're not a support main, because at some point in your Overwatch career, unless you are a total jerk to your teammates, you'll probably play support in a game. Arguably the most important thing when it comes to playing support well is to have an excellent sense of positioning inside the game. A player's positioning as a support can be a dead giveaway between a good and a bad support player. Now, the appropriate positioning for supports comes down to several variables in any particular match, so it's up to you to figure out where they are and keep them in mind, while constantly asking yourself if you're in a good position, and if not, where you should be instead. Now, the first variable is simply the support hero that you've chosen to play. For example, heroes like Moira, Lucio, or Brigitte should look to be positioned near their tanks as often as possible. First of all, they're relatively short-range healers, and so they'd need to be close to the action to keep the rest of their team topped off, or else they're pretty useless. A good Lucio or good Moira will constantly be asking if their position will allow them to heal multiple people with their abilities, and constantly look for ways to make sure that they do so. If you fail to take advantage of the fact that you can heal multiple allies at once, you're just not going to reach the full potential of your hero, and your teammates are probably going to die. On the other side of the spectrum, Ana and Zenyatta are obviously a lot safer in the back lines. By being farther away, they force the enemies to overextend to attack them, and since they lack the mobility options to fall back like the others, it's typically the safest place for them to be, since the enemies will have to go through your whole team to get to you. Not only that, but by being farther back, it provides you with a much better field of view of the match, which will make it a lot easier for healing your teammates and keeping track of everybody throughout a fight, so you know when to pop an ultimate. Now, that's not necessarily all that matters when it comes to positioning as a support. A good support will also be mindful of the other support on their team and sticking with them. That way, if the supports are dove by someone like Tracer or Genji, you're never leaving a single support to try and deal with them by themselves. Good support players, first and foremost, need to be ready to be dove over and over inside the game, but they'll also stick with their other support so that when the dive comes, the healing and damage combined from the two of them can be enough to drive back enemy flanks and dives at least long enough for the rest of your team to come help out. Knowing how to duel versus targets like Tracer though will help you out a ton. One of the most important things you can do as a player on the team is to constantly look for teammates to help and not necessarily enemies to kill. A good support will always have this thought in the back of their mind. While characters like Zenyatta, Moira, Ana, or even an aggressively Lucio can be nagging pain for enemy teams and secure some kills, it's more important to keep in mind that your job is to look for teammates to help. This means using Ana's grenade defensively in order to heal as opposed to looking for the offensive ones, unless it's to secure a kill or to counter something like an enemy Zenyatta ult. It also means using your orbs as Moira for the additional amount of healing they can give, and their ability to help players who are out of range of her primary fire. Way too often, people who don't play support will relapse into a state of trying to help secure kills and doing damage instead of focusing on the golden rule of always looking for teammates to help. When you start playing with this mindset and remember to support first, your team will stay alive longer, eventually giving you the advantage in team fights and allowing your team to snowball off those small victories. If you're able to keep your teammates alive doing damage, you'll probably do a lot more damage over the course of the fight than if you were to DPS yourself and let them fend for themselves. Now communication is also really important for playing as one of the best support players, and you're uniquely qualified to control the pacing of the game as a support player. Some of the game's most powerful abilities, things like Sound Barrier, Transcendence, Nano Boosts, are all in the hands of support players. And since these abilities can be so important for allowing teams to win fights, a good support will want to take control of the situation by telling their teammates how to play around what they have available at the time. For example, a good Lucio can let his team know that they have Sound Barrier available and encourage the team to use that aggressively in an incoming fight. 
Simply by calling the play and letting your team know that you're going to speed boost them to the point and use sound barrier when the fight breaks out, you're dictating the play of the game and giving your team a clear focus for the next fight. When they know you're there and plan on using key abilities like this, it removes uncertainty from your tanks and DPS and encourages them to focus solely on aiming and fighting together. Someone like Farah or Reaper are heavily enabled by these shields and by this speed, and they're going to be able to get to a perfect spot to do tons of damage. Also as a support, your backline positioning often gives you a greater advantage in tracking enemy movements than those who might be diving the enemy team or in the thick of a team fight. Being able to call out things like flankers on alternate routes or enemy players who overextend can give your team a huge advantage simply by collapsing on those players and giving your team the numbers advantage. Good supports will constantly be looking for opportunities to play a sort of director role and let their team know any time that they see a chance to gain the advantage over the enemies. This can even come from recognizing situations where your team has lost a fight and encouraging them to retreat and group back up. Oftentimes as a support when you die, the most important thing you can do and the first thing you should do is let your team know that they're missing their healer and if they don't think they can win without you, tell them to fall back and regroup. Supports who fail to communicate their death will also cause allies who aren't paying attention to maybe rage as they overextend without realizing they can't be healed anymore. Make sure to let your team know if you die and use that time to let them know important things like enemy positions, if they should retreat, and other facts that can determine how a fight ends up going for your team, like ult charge. A good support player also won't slack on practicing their aim either, no matter what you guys may think. While it may sound silly and supports aren't going to be as impressive as something like McCree or Widowmaker, it's still important to work on your aim as a support. A lot of Lucio players, for example, suffer from lazy aim where they tend to just spam shots instead of focusing on selecting targets and aiming, while also controlling their trajectory as they frantically skate around. Sound Barrier can charge incredibly fast when Lucio is dealing damage, so the best Lucios will be precise and lethal with their shots instead of spamming shots mindlessly. And if someone jumps into your face before you use your right click to knock them away, a couple left clicks into their heads can do a surprising amount of damage. The same applies for other heroes like Zenyatta and Ana. Zenyatta in particular is capable of melting enemy players when he hits multiple orbs on targets with the Discord. There's a reason that fans often joke about Jonak of New York Excelsior being the team's third DPS, and it's because he constantly lights up the kill feed because of his position with the character. Similarly, Ana is, to put it bluntly, useless if the character can't hit her shots consistently. Even if you've chosen to main support because you're the type of person who loves to heal, or if you're just filling the role for your team in a competitive game, if you want to be good at support, never let the fact that you're a healer distract you from the fact that you're playing a shooter, and you can use it as an opportunity to improve or show off your aiming abilities. If you work on it, not only you'll be better at people like Lucio or Anar Zenyatta, but you'll also be better on your DPS, obviously, and on tanks like Roadhog and Zarya. Now if you're looking to improve as a support player quickly, you should always consider maximizing your actions per minute, or as D.Va would put it, your APM. For example, a hero like Brigitte can put out much more healing and armor for teammates if her armor is being used as soon as it comes off cooldown every single time. Throughout the duration of a match, getting off more and more abilities like Discord Orb when someone dies, more Amp It Ups on Lucio, and more Orbs out as Moira, can really make a huge difference between you and the average player. The best support players are aware of their cooldowns and capitalizing on using these key abilities as quickly and as often as they can inside the game, and because of this their numbers reflect that match in and match out. While you definitely want to hold some key abilities, especially if you know a fight is just about to break out and you really need the extra boost of healing or armor, it's also really important to make sure you're not sitting on any abilities and wasting your character's potential. Anyway, hopefully with some of the tips that we've shared today, you can see some improvement in your gameplay, even if you don't always play support. Flexibility and diversity is really important for getting better at Overwatch, and taking time to learn other roles or to master yours is the best way that you're going to improve your skill rating. When you step back and see how each role connects together, it gives you a better understanding of what's going on with your team when you step outside that role, since you'll have experienced the match from their side as well. And learning to play as support helps you learn how to play against it, since you'll know how to spot an out of position support and how to capitalize on it as well, knowing their weaknesses and their strengths. 
Now, if you guys happen to be new here or you just haven't subscribed yet, make sure that you press that subscribe button or else you may never see us again. And wouldn't that be horrible? Anyway, you guys have been awesome and I'll see you next time. Peace.